impossible. Cause oh, God. Yes. Hallelujah. Put your hands together one more time. An offering of praise unto the King of Kings. Yay! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God. Praise God. Amen. God bless you for being in the Lord's house on the Lord's day. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that you are here. Someone said we lost an hour and I said, no, I know exactly where it's at. They stole my hour. I didn't lose nothing. Bless God. And for the rest of you that are here, amen. I think you feel the same way. It's funny how an hour kind of messes you up. But it's what we do and you rebound and I'm glad you're here. So if you're dragging just a little bit, I could understand. But thank you for being here. You're streaming with us online. I I learned this week that we have several people that faithfully stream online from other states. That was confirmed to me. So if you're streaming from another state or even another country, God bless you for being here. In Old Town Temecula, I wish you were here in person, but hey, let's leverage technology when we have to. Amen, amen. You can be seated for just a moment, but a couple things I want to tell you and then I'm going to be preaching. Uh, I just want to give recognition to Brother Devon. Brother Devon, God bless you for being a part of our church. Amen. I'm glad that you have been coming. There you are. Okay, there you are. Amen. Brother Devon is getting out of the military, kind of with some PTO, and he'll be heading back to Florida, where home is. Next Sunday, he'll be here, but he'll be leaving, returning home. Boo, boo. But Devon, good to see you, my friend. I'm glad we could be a source of dispensing the Spirit of God in your life as you've been in the military 3,000 miles from home. And so I bless you, the journey ahead, the travels, and don't forget about us, I pray. You know, every now and then log online, make sure we're still here, check on us. And anyway, we bless you, and I'm glad that we could connect, and the military made our paths come together. So God bless you, Brother Devon. Our blessings go with you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. I want to welcome Pastor Waddle's parents. To, I want to welcome the Waddles with us from Minnesota. Amen. Don and Deb Waddle. Also, I'll say happy birthday to Don Waddle today. Happy birthday, amen. We're celebrating his 57th birthday, plus whatever else. I don't know what's on top of the 57, but God bless you guys for being here. And I just want to remind everybody, uh, last summer we raised a year's worth of lease for the Andersons, uh, missionaries to Brazil, and 12 of us committed to $900, and maybe a few others committed over, and we all that money has long been sent to the Andersons. And in the course of us doing that, they have asked us and the Waddles to come and teach in the Bible college, dedicate the church that we kind of help fund for a year. So I just letting you know, tonight we drive over to LAX to stay the night by LAX so we don't have to deal with the 91 traffic at 4 a.m. We fly out tomorrow morning to Brazil at 9 a.m., 14-hour flight land about 5.30 a.m. on Tuesday. We'll be teaching in the Bible College. We'll be doing some sessions, the four of us, or actually the three of us. My wife's report from Friday from the doctor, some have asked, the doctor said that she's healing. Her words were beautiful. It looks beautiful. She says, but I want you to go another week without talking and just writing and texting. And she says, I know you guys are going to Brazil and that's fine. Just please don't talk or talk as little as possible, but it's healing beautiful. And I reminded the doctor, and I think that, right. I said, well, our goal, our objective is that she's singing in the choir by the end of the year, and that her ministry is restored. And I said, thank you, doctor, for helping us on the journey. And so that's the goal. Worst case scenario, December choir, my wife sings lead. Woo! And I'm so confident, I told her, hey, babe, I'm so confident you're anointing him to come back. I'm not even going to study for a message because that place is going to erupt. And I'm going to run the aisle. Hey, what are you, pre oh, I didn't prepare. I thought my wife was going to bring the house down. So anyway, kind of give you an update on that. And then we return on March 21st. And so as a pastor, let me just say this. What would comfort my soul the most is that you guys, everybody's here next Sunday and you have church. You know when we're in Brazil, excuse me, but when a pastor is out, I'm going to say on other spiritual duties, the only thing that vexes his soul is absentees. 
I don't worry about the quality. I don't worry about the music. I don't worry about the place being unlocked. I don't worry about the air. I don't worry about anything other than I just hope everybody shows up because they know we're absent, but God knows where everybody is. So I would just say do us a favor so we can minister next weekend in Brazil and not worry about our local church, which is our first calling. And my love is here, but we did accept the invitation last summer, and now it's upon us, and so we leave several hours after I'll be preaching Spanish. But just kind of giving you a little update and say, hey, Pastor, what do you need while you're gone? I just need you to come to church. I just need you to go to group. And then if you would do that, then my soul will be at peace and all is well. Praise God. What a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. Great Sundays. Make better Mondays. Amen, amen. All right, let me preach to you. Could you stand in honor of the word of the Lord? Again, it's been mentioned. Our LED wall will be up and running this week. Some little power issues. As always, when I preach, at least in the app, are my slides. I did slides. I didn't know about the wall, so I prepared slides. You'll go there to the slides, and you'll go under more, and then you'll go to sermon notes. So every time I preach, um, I will have slides for you. So if you want to follow me there, if you're in the back half of the church, then you might be able to see them. But I'm going to turn your attention to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. And while you're doing that, I just want to tell you in the spirit that when the shepherd is away. We have an amazing pastoral staff and wives to help be the watchmen on the wall. So the pastoral staffs and wives that are here, you know who they are. They're with us every Sunday. Please know that as the shepherd's out, the camp is not unsecured. The enemy will not rush in. We have watchmen and spiritual guards on duty. If you need anything, get a hold of the pastoral staff, the wives. They have been blessed, they have been anointed, and they, uh, that allows us to step out, knowing in my spirit that there are watchmen on the wall. So the camp is not unattended, right? The shepherd is not gone, the wolf does not come in. So access, we have about seven or eight plus wives, so you got about 15 options in our absence. So just a little reminder, you are still under covering, and you are still under authority, with spiritual oversight in our absence, and that's what God does, and it allows us to still be safe and secure back at home. And I just want to remind you that. Reach out to them. They're here. They're going to do whatever it takes, amen, to bring aid to you or counsel. So God bless you all. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. I'm reading from the easy-to-read version just because of the language, and it reads like this, but you are his chosen people. Somebody shout, yes, I am. The king's priest, yes, I am. You are a holy nation, yes, I am. People who belong to God, yes, I do. He chose you to tell you about the wonderful things he has done. He has brought you out of darkness of sin into his wonderful light. Someone shout, yes, he did. You are a chosen people. A king's priest a royal nation king james version says and he brought you out of darkness of sin into this translation says wonderful light as i ministered outside our local church last week in van nuys we were driving up the 15 to the 91 to the 71, to the 57, to the 210, to the 134, to the 101. And we finally got there. Kind of reminds me of a quarterback in football, right? 15, 91. And so it was about, we left about 8.30 and 50 minutes into it or 45. My wife brings up the service and she's watching and Pastor Waddle began to preach an amazing message. I got multiple compliments during the week. One, one compliment was to me, hey, he's, he, he's gone to a new level. So I said to them, did he pass me? If he did, good for him. He's a prodigy, right? 
took me 63 years, and he did it in 44, and I'm happy for him. But as he was preaching, I got my title for my message, a sequel. I didn't know I was going to be preaching this until I heard him preach. I listened to his message. And so my title message this morning is this. Others can fry chicken, but not like us. Others can fry chicken, but not like us. Lord Jesus, help me to preach about chicken. Help me to inspire and bring validation to the apostolics in this assembly, the Pentecostals. I pray an anointing upon my mind and spirit that I would speak the words of heaven. I rebuke any distraction that would come against our minds and spirits. I run the enemy off this property. I take authority. And I bring the peace and the power of the Holy Ghost back into this house. And in your name I say these things. And someone shout, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Others, in the app are my slides if you want to see those. Others can fry chicken, but not like us. Pastor Waddle talked last week about his grandmother frying chicken. Debbie talked about his mother frying chicken and how the fried chicken was just amazing. I, I come from a family tree that grew up and was born and bred in Louisiana, the South. And in my family tree, there were some good cooks that could cook Southern comfort food. Greasy fried chicken was on the menu most often in our home. Not to say there wasn't gumbo and etouffee and all these other amazing things, but my family knew how to fry chicken. It was amazing, as Pastor Waddle even expressed to his family in Minnesota. When you talk about fried chicken, you begin to think about some of the best food in life. You begin to think about things, and I was driving to the Van Nuys Church, and I thought, I feel like I need to have some chicken for breakfast. I need to find me a little Chick-fil-A and get me a little, little Chick-fil-A sandwich because chicken sounds good. And I got to thinking about chicken, and, you know, KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken's recipe, kind of separates them from the others to the likes of Cane's or Pie Pie's or Church's Fried Chicken. And, and they have their 12 herbs and spices, and it's locked in a vault, and they've got all these things going on. And probably one of the original fried chicken places that I recall is, is KFC. And there's something about when you get into a restaurant or a fast food place that you have your preference or your like about their fried chicken because you like the way they do it. You like that it's moist and that it's crispy. You like that it's reasonable. You like the seasons in it. And then often you frequent that place because you like like the fried chicken. And some of the things that they have in the uh, franchisee or the menu and the recipes that's handed down that makes their chicken who they are and what they are. But as I rode north last Sunday, I thought about us as apostolics and Pentecostals in the context of what he got me thinking about fried chicken. Hey, others can fry chicken but not like us. Some non-negotiable things have been handed down as proven biblical values, truths, and beliefs from the apostles and the apostolics to this church. And we are the franchisee of the power of the movement of the Word of God from the book of Acts. We do not have the ability or the liberty or the power to change what came from the book of Acts and the apostles when they preached it. Hey, they went by the temple and people were healed. They spoke into lives and people were made whole. They touched things and deaf ears were unstopped and blind eyes were opened. What are you talking about? Others can fry chicken, my friend, but not like us. We believe in an instantaneous power of the Spirit of God and we speak into things and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And that, mm, Come on, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We don't come for a lecture. We don't come for a political statement. We come to hear the profound, didactic word of God. Yeah, you can go get chicken anywhere in the city you want, but you're not going to get chicken like at the house of the Pentecostals. Woo! You got a hankering for chicken. There's a lot of chicken places. A lot of people can do chicken. Say, hey, after church, pastor inspired me. What are you going to do? I'm going to go get chicken. Well, you know, honestly, there's probably 100 places you could go get chicken. 
Some specialize in it. It's on the menu as a part of a bunch of different items. But let me just tell you, my friend, we specialize in frying chicken like the apostles did. We specialize in the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost that we walk in authority and we walk under authority and we command these things and you shall be healed, saith the word of God. What are you doing? I'm just frying chicken like the apostles did. I just believe that anybody in the sound of my voice that needs to be delivered, that needs to be healed, that needs to be put back together, by faith you are made whole. You're not going to get that at other chicken places, my friend, but at an apostolic church, you can come in dirty and you can walk out clean. You can come in weary and you can walk out strong. You can come in discouraged and you can walk out. Mm, come on. Woo! Yeah, you can find chicken. You can find chicken at McDonald's. You can find chicken at Applebee's. You can find chicken at Chili's. You can find chicken at Outback probably, but they don't fry it like us. Yeah, you can Google churches. You can get on there and go under Yelp. All kinds of churches will come up. Yeah, all churches fry chicken, but my point is they don't all fry chicken like us, my friend. We're talking about a transformational message. By faith, you are made whole. By faith, your marriage is restored. By faith, you shall walk into these things, saith God. We don't need 12 weeks. I don't need a program. I don't need to give you a booklet other than the word of God, saith God. I believe what he's doing. What are you doing? We're apostolics, and our recipe is a little different. Woo! And so we are led of the Spirit. We are fed by the Spirit. We are a Spirit-led church, a Spirit-fed church, and we rely on the Spirit. What are you talking about the Spirit? I'm talking about the recipe from the book of Acts. I'm talking about it's been proven, it's been tried. In law, it's called the black letter law. What does that mean in law and attorney's terms? It means that's been so proven, you can't contest it, you can't change it, you can't alter it, you can't come against it. Hey, that law has been in effect for 100 years. It's proven the test of time. My friend, that's what I'm preaching about this morning. If you need a fresh word from God, you're sitting in the Holy of Holies, and the Spirit of God will come forth through the preaching and change a life, change the trajectory, change a thought, what are you doing? I'm just frying chicken apostolic style. Good chicken. Jack in the Box has its secret sauce. In and Out has its secret spread. Mrs. Phil's Cookies has her secret recipe. But I want to tell you, my friend, the Pentecostals have theirs too. We believe in holiness. We believe in separation from the world. We believe in walking in authority according to the word. And it's the anointing that was preached about last week that brings us the authority of separating ourselves from the world. I don't think like the world. I don't dress like the world. I don't believe like the world. I don't live like the world. What are you doing? I fried chicken, but not not like they do. Yeah. Woo! Yes, I still believe in holiness. And as the songwriter Lance Appleson said, I suggest that you to do the same. I'm a one God, apostolic, tongue-talking, holy, rolling, born-again believer in the liberating power of Jesus' name. Yeah. Woo! Others can fry chicken, but not like us. I believe in holiness. And I suggest that you to do the same. What are you talking about? Because there's power and there's anointing when you separate yourself from the world. You can't look like the world. You can't talk like the world. And then walk in harmony with the anointing of the Spirit of God that was birthed in the book of Acts, my friend. Those two don't live in harmony. Those are not Siamese twins. I'm not tethered to the world in the book of Acts. Hey, I'm all in, my friend. I've got both feet in. I'm never turning back. Why? Because that's the power of the Spirit of God. It's an anointing. I'm never going to look and act like the world. I'm never going to believe all the stuff they believe. If greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, I don't want to be in the world. Because that's greater in the church. The church always wins. And I am the church. Paul writes in his second epistle in Corinthians chapter 6. Therefore come out from among them and be ye separate. Says the Lord, touch not... No unclean thing, and I will receive you. You know what I've realized? Hey, the world has a lot of unclean things. The Bible says don't touch them. To your point last week, come on, you're anointed. The oil of the Spirit, your vessel, the virgins, their lamps, you have oil in you. That oil don't mix with that vinegar. 
That lightness don't mix with that darkness. That holiness don't mix with that ungodliness. Come on, somebody. That frame of mind of faith with God doesn't mix with human, the humanistic thinking of the world. No, you can't put a pencil to God. You can't put him in an Excel sheet, my friend. When it sounds illogical, that's where God picks up. But if you're going to get stuck in the world and you're going to fry chicken like other people, my friend, you're going to get stuck up into your own thinking and working and God is limited to your knowledge. No, no, no. I am submitting myself to the things and the word of God. What are you doing? I'm believing in the book of Acts. I'm I'm an apostolic preacher. I'm an apostolic pastor. And there is anointing upon the lives of you folks. It says, touch not, I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you. And you will be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. It's preceded in verse 17. By come out from among them and be ye separate. From among them be ye separate says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. If I'm going to come out and not touch the unclean thing, I'm not going to have carnal and humanistic thinking. That's unclean. That's anti-God. That's humanistic. You can't define God in your own intellect, my friend. you got to have faith, and God operates in faith. You want to be healed? you got to have faith. God can heal you today. You come in this morning with a strained and fractured marriage. You can go home today as honeymooners when God steps in. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm frying some chicken this morning. Morning, but not like other people do. We've got a recipe. We've got an anointing. We've got a word from God that comes from the Pauline epistles. It started in the book of Acts. And in the 21st century, in the year 2024, we're still going to be apostolic. I'm still going to be Pentecostal. I'm still going to walk in the spirit. I'm still going to separate myself from the world. Why? Because that's where the anointing is. Woo! We still believe in modesty. We believe in more clothes showing than skin. We still believe in honesty. We still believe in purity. What are you doing? That's part of our recipe from the book of Acts and the apostles living. We still believe in holy living. We still believe in sacrifice. I still believe in giving to God. We believe in the submission of the word of God, the man of God, and the voice of God. Submission is a part of my life. What are you talking about? I'm submitting to what thus saith the word of God. And when the man of God preaches as a pastor that I'm doing this morning, and the man of God preached last week, if I'm going to submit to the power of the preaching, and then God's going to anoint my life, but I don't figure all this out on my own. I'm under covering. I'm associated with a church. i got a pastor praying for me. I've got a shepherd protecting me. i mm, I still believe in the new birth experience. What's the new birth experience? Repentance. Uh Baptism in the name of Jesus with the washing away your sins and the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues as God gives the utterance. These are what I call our essentials, our distinctives, our apostolic distinctives. In, In chicken's terms, it's our recipe. I fry chicken. Yes, I do. Romans 1 and 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. My friend, all I'm saying is all you got to do is believe. I am not ashamed of my lifestyle. I'm not ashamed of the way my wife dresses. I am not ashamed of the conversations that we have alone. I am not ashamed of my thoughts. I am not ashamed of my ambitions. I am not ashamed. Why? Because it is the power of God unto salvation. It's the spirit that leads us. It's the spirit that talks to us. It's the spirit that anoints us. It's the spirit that goes for us. Why? Because I'm frying chicken like an apostolic, like they did in the book of Acts. I know we're 2,000 years later, but the power of God is still anointing upon God's people that will receive it. Woo! Hey, it's the old paths that brought us out of darkness. Watch me now. And has kept us in the light. Woe to them that start start degrading your convictions and the power of the old paths. Woe to them that starts to commercialize your walk with God. And then wonder, where's the power in Pentecost? Start opening up the windows and the doors to your home and your life and letting things in there that the apostles preached against. 
And then I, 2,000 years later, pick up the voice from the word of God and preach against it. Yes, I do. Because I know the power from the word of God. I know what God showed me. And I'm preaching a life that's an example that I live before you. That, hey, we are separated from the world, my friend. We believe in holiness. And the further I get away from carnality and darkness, the world, the more holy and more powerful I get. So my objective in life is to separate me, to get that gulf between me and the carnality thinking of the world. And when I do that, I get closer to God. I become more like God. I'm more intuitive in the spirit of God. But I've got to push away from the things of the world. The world and the power of the spirit of Pentecost cannot coexist, my friend. Don't try. As I'm just telling you from experience, in my life that I see and I live and people that I've pastored over 24 years, you can't blend the two and think you're going to be anointed like the apostles were. There's got to be a separation. You've got to guard yourself. You've got to protect yourself. You've got to watch this. The writer says, bringing every thought into captivity into the obedience of the word of God. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Watch me now. Which is your reasonable service? Your body is the temple of God. Don't abuse it. Don't destroy it. Don't taint it. Don't graffiti it. Why? Because it's the temple of the Holy Ghost. A few years back, I started praying this prayer when I, eat, when I have dinner with my wife, with anybody, when I eat. My family says I don't eat that much, but I do eat. I pray this. I said, Lord, I pray. You can have my prayer. You can, you can steal it. It's okay. Lord, I pray right now for this food that it would nurture the temple of the Holy Ghost. That it'll bring strength to this body. I rebuke disease. I rebuke high blood pressure. I rebuke high blood levels. This is your temple. Be pleased with it. I will steward the temple. Lord, you will be proud of this. Let nothing come against this temple, Lord, that you don't okay. I believe it in Jesus' name. And sometimes my prayers go a little long, and I can see my wife over there with her fork. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) Not really. But I say, God, hey, I'm praying this is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And my friend, if you've received the Spirit of God with the evidence of speaking in tongues, then you are a temple, a reflection of the Spirit of God in flesh. God lives inside of you. And when God lives inside of me, there's things that God won't do, so there's things I won't do. There's conversations that God wouldn't have, so there's conversations I won't have. There's thoughts that God wouldn't have, so there's thoughts that I'm not going to have. Why? Because that's God living inside of me, and the external is Tom Durant's, but the internal is the Holy Ghost, the power of God. Why? Because I am an apostolic believer from the book of Acts that it still works, and I'm going to be ready, and my lamp is full of oil, and when he comes back for his church that's holy and godly without spot or wrinkle, we are those people. Someone shout, Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Woo! Mm. Charles Spurgeon lived from 1834 to 1892, the great theologian. In the 1800s, said this, and I quote him. A time will come when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, the church will have clowns entertaining the goats. Charles Spurgeon, the late 1800s. A time will come, instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, the church will have clowns entertaining the goats. My takeaway from that is, if you're not careful, this thing just begins to drift. And then it becomes a house of entertainment. It becomes a performance, Brother Caleb, It becomes what? Come on, America's got talent. It becomes these things. No, no, no. Those are ungodly TV shows, my friend. That is not in the house of God. It's not a bunch of smoke and mirrors. It's not a bunch of bells and whistles. It's the anointing from heaven, from the holy of holies, and the Shekinah glory of God that comes down on this house, and it makes people whole. It changes my thinking. It changes my lifestyle. It changes my trajectory. What are you doing? I'm not selling out to the world. I'm not dumbing down the gospel. I'm not afraid of preaching the book of Acts. Why? Because it's the soul-saving thing. And power from the night from the mighty God in Christ. Come on, 
Others can fry chicken, but not like us. In fact, Brother Steve, yeah, I, I could go to Winco and get fried chicken in the frozen department. But that's not the way I cook it. Yeah, there's all kinds of fried chicken. You can go with the name brand Banquet, or you can go with the Winco brand. Winco brand. <laughs> Vons. Oh, Vons is cheaper. Yeah, have you tasted it? No, no, you, you want chicken? Go to a place that specializes in chicken. You want anointing? You go to church that specializes in the anointing. You want to hear and feel the spirit of God flow every Sunday and lives are changed? You better get to a spirit-filled church because not everybody can fry chicken like a spirit-filled church. Why? Because it's the anointing. I'm not bashing other restaurants. I'm not bashing any other chicken chains. I'm just telling you, I know what I grew up in. I've seen Grandpa do this. I've seen anointing. I've seen miracles. I've experienced. I've been involved. You've come too late after 63 years to tell me your chicken doesn't matter and your recipe is irrelevant. No, 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 my friend. You better get a fresh glimpse of Calvary and the anointing that God has on your life and it'll change your life. It'll change your marriage. It'll change your kids. It'll change the next generation. Mm, come on, you better check your oil. Woo! So yes, yeah, separation. This is still a church and I'm a pastor and we're pastors feeding the sheep. We're not clowns entertaining the goats. I didn't come to entertain nobody. Today, my message might offend somebody. But I think what the apostles would say, Brother Tony, get over it. That sounds mean. Well, I've read some mean things in here. At least I thought they were mean. One of the apostles in the Pauline epistles said, Do I therefore become your enemy because I speak the truth? Ooh, that's kind of mean. I'm in the word right now. You don't believe me? Do I therefore become the, your enemy because I speak the truth? That's in the Bible. I didn't make that up. But it's about the anointing. It's about the oil that he preached about. The original recipe. You see, we get our name. We are True Vine Pentecostal Church. Pentecostalis comes from the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. That changed everything. I'm not ashamed of the old paths. I will guard them. I will protect them. I will defend them. And yes, my friend, I will fight for them. When I think about the generation that has gone before me and some of the elders that are even still living, they came, came out of deep, dark sin. But they're still serving God today. They didn't get no watered-down apostolic message, babbling tongues and touch my toe in the water of baptism. No, they went down in a watery grave. And the Bible says, like I said, they came up a brand new creature. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. That's my old life. What are you doing? I've got the power to live a holy and anointed life now because God has filled this temple with his spirit. Second Timothy, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Watch me now, Repu reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, keep heaping to themselves teachers having itching ears. Hey, just tell me what feels good. Just, just, just tickle my ear. I'm in the word. There's going to come a time. Itching ears. And watch this. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You, you see, Timothy's saying here, hey, you got to guard the truth. Proverbs 23, 23, buy the truth and sell it not. Hey, if God has changed you and he's filled you with the spirit, I'm just telling you, my friend, you better protect that at any cost. Don't dumb it down. Don't water it down. Don't squash your convictions. Don't make excuses why you're doing what you're doing. You need to get back up and face Calvary face to face and say, God, I need a fresh anointing. My strength from yesterday is gone. I need to know what you told the apostles. I'm going to raise my family in a godly environment. And there's some things we're going to say no to. Yeah, I got a gospel of no's. Yeah, yes, but I'm anointed. I heard him preach last week. He said, somebody, you're going to get some no's. Yes, you are. We raise our kids and we tell them no when it's not good for them. 
But when God says no, or what about our beliefs say no, or some of you use it, hey, my church says no, whatever you want to frame, it's fine, my friend, but, but you have to do what God's called you to do. Amen. However you want to frame it. Your church didn't tell you nothing. Right. You tell yourself everything you want to hear. Amen. So just let me help you here. I'm going to close down. I've got to close down. When I look at my life and I look at the church I'm pastoring, I'm expecting us to be apostolic. Okay? We're going to be loving. We're going to be kind. Arms are always open. Doors are always open. Hearts are always open. But I don't march to that beat. I don't march to that drummer. I, I don't wear that uniform. I'm on another team. I'm, I'm in the Lord's army. I, I'm on the Lord's side. And once I'm going to get saved, I'm going to stay saved. My friend, I've just purposed in my heart, I'm never quitting. I'm never leaving the church. I'm never going back out. I'm never going from light to darkness. The Bible says I went from darkness to light. It never gives me an opportunity or a bridge to go from light to darkness because that's not expected. And so when you start flirting with darkness, my friend, you start opening up a whole another level of pushing back on the Spirit of God. Let me just make it clean, pl plain and clear. We believe in separation from the world. I don't live like them. I don't talk like them. I don't dress like them. I don't recreation like them. I don't entertain myself like them. Negative? No, no, it's not negative. I'm just telling you what the Spirit does. We have wonderful neighbors. I'm in a text thread. I'm getting ready to text them today. Hey, I already wrote my text. I'm leaving for Brazil on a missions trip. Please keep an eye on our house while we're gone. My son will pick up the mail in a couple days, but just keep an eye on our house. P.S., a side note, by the way, Easter is the end of the month. I need you to be my guest. They know I'm a pastor. I'm not afraid to, to tell them, hey, come to Easter. Hey, we got a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You've already mentioned it. Hey, but in the meantime, uh, you're my friend. Watch my house. I got to go to the Lord's business. Make sure nothing happens to my house in America when I'm in South America. What are you doing? I want them to be a part of what I'm doing too. So please don't let the enemy twist it and say, hey, pastor's mean. No, no, no. Do I therefore become your enemy because I speak the truth? I afraid not. I hope not. Starting in Wednesdays in, in April, I'll be preaching what I'm going to call no sugar added preaching. You want, you want to get some old paths? Come to the first Wednesday in April. You want to hear, hey, I wasn't around grandpa back three generations ago. How do they preach it? I'm going to show you how they preached it in April. And if you're easily offended and you're flirting with the world, you might not like Wednesdays in April. What are you talking about? Because I'm trying to save your soul. You see, when Grandpa preached, he didn't care about what you thought. He cared about your soul. And when your soul is right, you cared about what he thought. Amen. Maybe you're new here today. Say, oh, I'm going out. Yeah, come on, give me one more Sunday. Well, I won't even be here next Sunday. Give me two Sundays. What are you saying? It's about the power. I've been set free. We sing the song, and it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest, lowest valley. Oh, the blood! I almost saw Talamahaye. I said the blood that sets me apart, that washed me clean, that was shed on Calvary. It would never, never, never lose its power. Come on. To the highest mountain. Watch it, and it flows. And it flows Woo. to the lowest valley. Come on, it's the blood. Oh, yes. The blood ah. that gives me praise. Ah. From death.
I'm preaching about. The power of Calvary would never diminish in an apostolic holy church. The power of the cross would never subside in a holy life. It soothes my doubts and it calms my fears, but it will never, never lose its power. Hey! From the vessels it reaches to the high, highest mountain come on it's gonna find you yeah. come on apostolics sing with me down here come on friend this is what they would do when I would grow up they would stop and say is anybody need a touch from God come down here does anybody need to be anointed come down here today's your day we shall speak into darkness and light shall appear come on this is old school this is the old path and people were delivered and people were restored it's the blood that reaches to the highest mountain. Huh. Come on, you need a fresh anointing? Come on, get, get down here quickly. Come on, we're gonna sing it one more time. This is your invitation. Come on, the blood. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, ministers, help me, ministers. That Jesus shed for me.
connect with you, pray with you, and be here with you, strengthening your relationship with Jesus Christ. Whether that be through a Bible study, baptism in Jesus' name, or striving to receive the infilling of the Spirit. We want to connect with you to see the amazing things that God is doing and is going to do in your life. Visit us at truevine.live and become a part of what God is doing at Truevine, what He's going to continue to do in your life.